Okay, we're back working on this 2011 Chevy Cruze, and with the it has the rear disc brakes. Going to be replacing these brake pads back here. I just want to show you what I've got. Okay, so this is our pads with the AC Delco, and we've also got the hardware. Okay, I wanted to go over the tools we're going to be using here briefly. Okay, and I'm just using some ordinary alcohol up there to clean things up. Now this is probably your most important tool. You can get this from AutoZone. It's a loaner tool. And you just go in here and you find the appropriate size you're going to need for your piston. Which in this case is this F. And then it's like magnetized. Snaps right on there. And this part right here slips on like so. And then when we move this, it tightens that against that that part of the caliper. You'll see that. Okay, so we've got a torque wrench here. Uh, just got another wrench with a 10 millimeter on it. Uh, just a 13 millimeter wrench, uh, flat screwdriver, another small screwdriver. Uh, you need a little wire brush. And I'm using this silicone paste, some blue Loctite. You may need a syringe and a container if you need to take any of the old fluid out. So up here is where you'll take any excess fluid out. So you want to take a look at this if you can see it where it's at. So when you go to pushing that piston back, take out any excess. So keep an eye on that. Okay, very first thing, we chalked the front tire up here. Okay, now I've just placed my jack back here on this center brace carefully and just to kind of kill two birds, one stone and get to both sides. You could place it in different places. You see the jack stand up there. Okay, I just want to show you. And um, you could also lift this right here if you want. It's just up to you. Okay, now sometimes I forget this step because I often use the impact, but you're going to need to break these lugs loose before you lift it up. So you want the weight on the wheel to break them loose. Okay, so let's just pretend this is, this is not lifted up and we're going to go through and break each one of these loose. Okay, this is something that can happen also. Okay, this is a 19 millimeter, by the way. I don't think I even mentioned this. Okay, very first thing we're going to get on these bolts up here. Okay, so we're going to take our 10 millimeter and go ahead and loosen this up. Even if you think your brakes don't look bad, it's always a good idea to go through here and check these. These slide pins can get gunked up, they can seize. Okay, this little weird thing on the bottom is your uh, noise dampener. You're just going to use a 13. And then we'll go ahead and finish removing that upper one. Okay, now at this point we should be able to wiggle this off here. Now you want to also get you a box or something you can set this on so it's not just flopping around and falling. Okay, and um, we're just going to push these off. And pay attention to which way your little squeaker goes. And just put it back the same. Okay, now let's take a look at these. So you can see that, like the top here, 
is wore down like within an eighth of an inch. And then we got like a lot back here and it's wore a little bit here. But the front one is definitely wore down a lot more. <clears throat> All right, let's get this hardware off. Okay, and we're just going to take our little wire brush and kind of clean these up a little bit. We'll do the same thing on the top. Okay, we've got our new hardware. Okay, so we're going to take these slides out. I'm just going to pop the whole thing off. And then you'll pop this off of here. And then we're going to take and uh, clean this up real good. Okay, what I'm using here is my little screwdriver. I got a little alcohol in there. Now a little bottle cleaner would be ideal. But sometimes you have to improvise. You want to get all this gunk out of here. So we're gonna we're essentially just gonna clean this up a little bit. And then we'll run our slide back in there and see how clean it is. So I'm just going to run this in and out of here until I can get it coming out clean. Yeah, it's not real bad. Okay, so we're going to take this and apply it to our pin now. Okay, we'll just pop our little boot back on. You can clean that up too if you'd like. And we'll just wipe up any excess here. And basically we'll just do the same thing to the top one. Okay, I just wanted to show you this top pin because it's surprisingly worse then the bottom, so it's like dried up. So we gotta clean that out really good. And this is, you can see, that's this is a lot of the problems, I'm sure. That is not moving freely at all. So I need to go in there and clean all that gunk out like we did the bottom. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna keep cleaning on that until this thing's coming out clean. Okay, we're going to get on our piston here, and I like to take white lithium, a rag, and go all around and clean this little rubber boot, plus it kind of lubricates it and keeps it from maybe tearing, and it's got it kind of set in here. Okay, so we're going to get our tool in place. Remember, we got the F adapter, and it just fell off. All right, let's try this again. All right, so you want to have this screwed down so you can fit it on here. And then we're going to have to back it up. I'm just backing it up with my fingers. You don't need to use a wrench. 
but you have to keep it snug. I'm going to get there eventually. All right, so you see how we've got this essentially. So we got to keep moving this as we're twisting this. And initially, it's a little hard to get moving, but once it starts turning, it's real easy. Now you got to keep keeping this tight against the caliper here, or you're not going to go anywhere. It's just going to spin. It has to keep that pressure. And this one's really tight. And again, I got to keep this snug up against this or it's going to just spin. So I'm actually turning this part essentially counterclockwise. Back that back off. We're getting there. And once uh, you get it bottomed out, it's right there, it won't turn anymore. All right, this is, all right, so there we go. Now we got it pushed all the way back. And it'll go right on our new pads. Okay, and just to show you that our tank, I mean, it come up to the full mark, but it's fine. But if it started overflowing, we'd have to take this and take some of this out so it doesn't spill over. Okay, so we're going to get our new pads on. And remember, we took the old ones off. Got the little squeaker, just like that. So we're going to take our new ones, put them on the same way. Now look at the difference in these. You know, maybe the back one's not as bad, but look at that front one there. And with them pins unseized, maybe these will operate a little better. Okay, and I like to take a little bit of my silicone. I just put a little bit right there. And these... Um, I found I have to go in at an angle because they're really tight. So I start out like so, and then I just twist it. I mean, you can tell how tight they are. Put them on. Okay, and again, we got a little bit of that on those contact points. So I'm gonna do this one the same way, even though I can't see as well back here. We're going to start it in at an angle and then we're going to try to twist it just like that. Okay so let's go ahead and set our caliper. Now you may have to push these in if they get in the way. Other than that it should go right on there no issue. Okay, I'm getting ready to start this top bolt, a little bit of medium Loctite. Just going to push it up a little bit here. Always get these started by hand. Don't ever put a wrench on it. You should be able to get it, get several threads started by wiggling it. Uh, these are very easy to cross thread and don't ask how I know. Okay, so we're gonna get our noise dampener, rattle dampener, whatever.
Okay, now I wouldn't go more than 20 foot pounds on these if you're going to torque them. I'm just going to be snugging this one up. Okay, say if this tries to spin on you, you'll take an 18 and just hold that part right there. Okay, so the upper one I can actually get my torque wrench on, so I'm going to torque it to 20. Alright, so we're ready to go ahead and get the wheel back on. Okay, and you remember the pesky, I really dislike these to say the least. This is the difference between a capped and a forged. See, they're um, identical, except this one is a complete forged. So, um, you know, maybe the angle ain't perfect, but it's pretty darn close. So we're going to be putting this back on because I can't stand these capped nuts. The rest of them are working okay. I need to, like, uh, find a set of these and leave a link. Now the only drawback is now I have a 21 millimeter nut and the rest of these being 19s. But I usually keep a four way anyways that has all the sizes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this jack stand out from under here. Go ahead and torque these to 100 foot pounds. Okay, very important before you unshock your wheels, come in here and you want to firm up your brake pedal, make sure the brakes are firm. Okay, so don't just shove it all the way to the floor. You can damage your master cylinder. Just move it a halfway at a time until we get them pumped back up. That feels pretty good. Okay, and also when you're done, you want to check your brake fluid. If you can see through the thing, and check it and make sure that your fluid level is good and just fill it as needed. All right, so that's going to do it for the video. I'll leave link to those uh, brake pads. It said not a very difficult job here, um, but, you know, definitely something that could turn in to worse problems if it starts eating up your road or so. I uh, just want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate all of the great feedback and comments I've been getting lately and the support for the channel. So thank you to everybody for watching and I'll see you on the next video.